Hello, and welcome to Crosstalk. My name is Elijah Weiss, and I am a Jewish believer in Jesus Christ. Today will be part two of our series titled The Apostle Paul and Hamas, where my grandfather links the current situation in Israel to Paul's message in Thessalonica. We also get to sit down with him face to face and ask questions about the current situation in Israel. Hope you enjoy. Unlike Israel, who only acts to protect and defend its citizens, Hamas chose to use innocent Palestinians to protect themselves. The bad guys took the innocent guys and hid behind them so that the bad guys could just keep firing rockets against civilians in Israel. It's shameful. Hamas builds their military attack bases under Palestinian hospitals, inside Palestinian schools, and as close to Palestinian civilian locations as possible to hide behind women and children. Instead of protecting the defenseless residents, they are supposed to lead. They want civilian casualties in Gaza. They want dead Palestinians to put on the news, to have photographs and videos made. It creates anti-Israel headlines. Well, as forewarned, Israel's bombardment began. Initially, most civilized nations stood with Israel. The world saw the bloodthirsty terrorists for what they were, murderous terrorists. Iran paid for it. Iran trained and armed the terrorists. Iran stoked the fires of hatred by demanding their paid terrorists in Lebanon, Syria, and wherever they could find them, launch their Iranian rockets and have attacks using Iranian weapons from the Iranian terror bases on three of Israel's borders. They're all the same thing. Iran, Hamas, Hezbollah, Islamic terrorists. They're all the same thing. They, they wear different gang colors. They carry different names. But it's the same thing. Iran, Hamas, Hezbollah, murderers, terrorists. Iran is the cold, evil heart and the oil-rich pocketbook of terrorism and the bloodlust to destroy Israel and to wipe out Jews. Unfortunately, many American institutions and American leaders, secretly and some of them publicly, hate Israel too. And that hatred has influenced the halls of Ivy League schools like Harvard, the University of Pennsylvania, the famous University of California, Berkeley. You know, there are reasons that Jewish students in many institutions of higher knowledge are afraid to walk around. They're, they don't feel safe on their own college campuses. And there's a reason for it. Anti-Semitic Palestinian groups dominate many college campus discussions. Consider that the halls of Congress have also been influenced by radical, anti-Semitic, hate-filled, congressional elected officials. In the days following the war launched by the leaders of the Palestinian Hamas, in Gaza, the U.S. Congress passed a simple resolution supporting Israel against Palestinian terrorists. One would have thought that would have been unanimously supported. Most Americans recognized Hamas intentionally attacked Americans too. They killed Americans. They kidnapped Americans. They're holding Americans hostage. 
Israel's enemy kidnapped, wounded, or killed innocent Americans intentionally. They did these things with little regard for our citizens or our ally. It was, it was hatred. It's demonic. Nevertheless, in our American Congress, 10 pro-Palestinian, anti-Israel U.S. House members voted against the resolution. They stand in support of Hamas terrorists instead of America's only democratic ally in the Middle East. It's a free country. I don't know what else to say. But these 10 elected to Congress should certainly never be reelected. They have the right to stand for or against whatever they want, but America should know they stood against the only democracy, our greatest ally, and they stood for murderous tyranny. Their anti-Semitism is despicable. And the mobs who riot in America against Israel are cheered on by such nonsense. One wonders how anyone could stand up in support of Islamic fundamentalist terrorism in America. You know, 9-11 was not that far removed from where we are today. Yet, those elected officials and those who fill the streets and burn Israeli flags and cry out, free Palestine, kill the Jews. And by the way, the correct thing to say would be free the hostages. They apparently have no memory or conscience. Still, the anti-Israel propaganda continues. All one must do is read the New York Times, listen to the BBC, or the early completely inaccurate reports on the CNN website, the World Health Organization, and leaders of Muslim nations around the world condemned Israel on October the 23rd, 2023. They all loudly and categorically accused Israel of launching an attack that struck a hospital in Gaza. It was published that hundreds of innocent Palestinians were murdered by the Jewish bombing of the hospital. There was immediate international outcry against Israel. No surprise. I believe it was intentional. Demonstrations broke out in cities around the world. Pro-Palestinian supporters took to the streets and to social media, condemning Israel and calling Free Palestine, kill the Jews. But here's what you need to know. It never happened. It was a lie from Hamas. Yes, there was a hospital in Gaza. And a bomb, a missile, did hit the parking lot. The news reported 400, 500 innocent Palestinians were killed in the hospital by the Israeli bombing. However, it was rapidly known. There was not a lot of time delay. Undisputable video proof was immediately available that Israel did not bomb the hospital where allegedly 500 innocent Palestinians were killed. It never happened. It was fake news spread by Hamas and quickly published by their powerful friends in the news media, like the New York Times. Instead of bloodthirsty Jews, as the world would have us believe, what really happened was that one of the jihadist terrorist rockets aimed at Israel civilians misfired and hit the hospital parking lot. By the way, 
the world knows that as many as one in five of Hamas missiles and rockets misfire and harm their own people. Nobody talks about it. The news won't tell it to you, but that's what is known, the truth, that it was a Hamas rocket that hit the property of the hospital and some people were harmed. That truth wouldn't cause anti-Israel and pro-Palestinian protesters to burn more Israeli flags or to continue taking to the streets. That fake news is what empowers left-wing college professors to continue their anti-Semitic indoctrination of college students. This negligent, unprofessional behavior by the so-called professional news media is why fake news fills the air and social media. But fake news is not new. Propaganda and hate speech cloaked in the passionate words of for the public good have been used as weapons against the innocent for at least 2,000 years. A few Jewish leaders use such propaganda to convince Rome to crucify Jesus. They knew how to populate and manipulate a kangaroo court. They knew how to stir up trouble, gather rabble-rousers, even make up things that would cause some to look at, would look like a mob. They carefully crafted a narrative to turn government leaders against an innocent man because Jesus was guilty of nothing. Similar propaganda campaigns by religious Jews were used to arrest and torment early Jewish Christian leaders, like one of the first newly appointed officials of the Jewish church in Jerusalem. Stephen was empowered by the Holy Ghost to do great things, and he did. But similarly to the circumstances experienced by Paul and his friends in Thessalonica, jealousy arose from the synagogue. A few days later, Stephen became the first martyr of the church at the hands of a mob instigated by fake news and propaganda. It is both sad and dangerous that people lack discernment and it is tragic that acts of hatred and violence can be brought, can be created so easily as a result. We must learn to recognize error and reject it. We must also learn to recognize truth so we can embrace it and support it. I want to look back again to Thessalonica in the book of Acts. After the angry Jews formed a mob and instigated a riot, they immediately directed their hatred of Paul towards Paul's friend, Jason. The mob stormed Jason's house. And Paul happened to not be in the house at that moment. So what the Bible tells us is they dragged Jason and some other believers they dragged him out to the street and hauled them down to local authorities to be punished. They made false accusations and spewed their own propaganda to the city officials, in spite of the fact that it was the Jews themselves who gathered the mob and started the riot. They blamed Jason and the Jewish Christians for the trouble that had ensued. Their false accusations created the desired effect. Scripture tells us the crowd and the city officials were thrown into turmoil. In that case, law and order prevailed. Instead of a rush to judgment and mob execution of Jason, what the Bible tells us is they made Jason and the others post bond and let them go. 
There's room for justice. There's room for law and order. It's our friend. It's, it's a friend to the innocent most of the time. And as we know from numerous other examples in the New Testament, sometimes mob rule overwhelmed Rome's system of justice. Whether it was the death of Jesus, the death of Stephen, the death of James, the brother of Jesus, or the numerous beatings or arrests and ultimate martyrdom of the Apostle Paul or the Apostle Peter and other early Jewish Christians. There were many martyrs. Most of the tragic things they experienced were predicated upon mostly false accusations, bitter propaganda, and the power of fake news. The believers in Thessalonica were very prudent. They recognized the unnecessary risk that Paul was taking just by being there. And they rushed to get him out of Dodge before, him, before he was arrested and beaten. He was spared on that occasion. Read the New Testament and you'll see numerous other occasions where he wasn't spared. Now, I heartily acknowledge that the early Jewish Christians believed that Jesus is the Messiah, and so do I. We're all guilty as charged if the accusation is limited to the theological and eschatological argument. But neither Jesus, Stephen, Paul, Jason, nor I call for the overthrow of any government, any king, or any duly elected official. Yet, that was often the accusation in the New Testament. They use the fact that people believed in Jesus to tell officials that means he wants to come down on Caesar. And Caesar was worshipped as a god in Rome. It was a pagan society. Though modern Jews and modern Jewish Christians don't see eye to eye on the person of who is the Messiah, we don't work to overthrow any of those in authority. We, we do what we can to submit to authority. Hamas is in authority in Gaza. They're thugs. They're not a government. They took over and they have been harming the population ever since they took over. They're terrorists, nothing less, murderous thugs. By the way, Hamas are, they're not duly elected officials. They hold their power through violence and corruption and evil. They're they're terrorists. They're murderers. They're rapists. They're kidnappers. And they are the true oppressors of the Palestinian people. Somebody needs to make this clear because a lot of people are confused about the two main adversaries who have brought the world to the brink of global disaster. The widely feared potential for World War III is on our doorstep. It was orchestrated by Hamas terrorists, funded by Iran on October the 7th, 2023. Yes, there is a complex war going on in the Middle East, but I'm gonna simplify the whole thing for you. There's only two facts you need to know to keep this all straight. Fact number one, Iran and Hamas have vowed to destroy Israel and kill all the Jews. But Iran has no nuclear bomb yet. And fact number two, Israel has plenty of nuclear bombs. 
They just want to live in peace. I mean, ask yourself, why hasn't Israel already nuked their monstrous enemies? I already gave you the answer. It was the second fact. Why do people hate Israel? Because they hate the God of Israel. Because they're deceived. Because they don't understand the Bible calls that God will bless those who bless Israel. He will curse those who curse Israel. I think these, this incursion had to have been planned over a long period of time yeah. by very shrewd, evil people. I say, I say evil because I don't know what else you could call an effort to slaughter civilians. Right. It's, it's yeah. evil. Absolutely. It's horrible. One thing that, that you said that kind of made me think, you said something about how Israel, when they attack, they let the, the civilians know, like, flee, we're about to attack. Yeah. Like, how? Like, what is that? Like, they've done it before where they... Yes. There's a thing called, I think they call it roof knocks. And they... They notify people. I mean, it's, a, it's publicly expressed. We're going to bomb this building. You do well to go away. Right. If this was another nation, they would not say, hey, we're coming. They would just come. The terrorists who crossed the border and came to kill the civilians in the in the settlement areas in the region surrounding you know nearby Gaza they snuck up on them they used the chaos of all the things taking place to attack with the element of surprise so that neither the military nor the civilians could defend themselves could get their weapons could protect could leave mm. the whole goal of the terrorists was to terrorize. Yeah. The thief comes to murder, to kill, to destroy. Steal, kill, and destroy. Yeah. Huh. These guys came to steal, kill, and destroy. Yeah. Sounds pretty evil to me. The enemy, yeah. There's a lot of people that have been wounded. Can you imagine how bad it's going to be for the Palestinians? Israel has cut off the electricity, the power, the water. Mm. There are two million people in Gaza who their life is not going to be the same for quite a long time. Right now, Israel has just said, uh-uh, off. Yeah. I couldn't imagine being there right now. No. Being one of the people that live in that area. That... It's, it's horrifying. How can we quietly go on with our activities knowing that most of the world, until there's a tragedy, until there's a war, most of the world doesn't care about the, the plight of Israel or the Palestinians. And most of the world supports the Palestinians. Every UN resolution that comes out in the region, is, it condemns Israel. Why? Because most of the world is controlled by the, uh, the opinions of the Arabs as it relates to the Middle East. And mm. oil is in the Middle East. Uh, yeah. Most of the world is pro-Palestinian and anti-Israel. When Palestinian terrorists barge into a synagogue and kill a rabbi and a bunch of people praying, okay? The Palestinian ends up getting shot by the police. It's on the news for 60 seconds. And then somebody's condemning Israel for the next thing, whatever it is. Yeah. The Palestinians have done a far superior job in the world of public relations than has Israel. People think that Israel stole the land from the Palestinians. And the Arab world is intent on propping up the cause the, of, of the, 
the poor Palestinian refugees who lost their homeland. They, <clears throat> this was their land from time immemorial. The problem with that myth is that it wasn't their land from time immemorial. Right. Other problems with the myth, Israel bought much of the land from so-called Palestinians who wanted to sell it. Okay, When much of Israel, in the formative years of Israel, it was, a lot of it was a wasteland. It was a desert. It wasn't prime real estate. Israel was granted its own restoration of its own homeland after World War II, something promised back in the early 1900s, 1917, the Balfour Declaration. Israel got what it was promised, a small part of what it was promised. It was supposed to have a lot more. It got a small part of what it was promised, and it became a Jewish homeland. Jews have been hated around most of the world and scattered. And after World War II, there finally was some place we could go. Had we had a homeland before Hitler, That's where we gone. it would have been a different situation. From 1948 forward, there has been a homeland for the Jews. You look, today there's a world population of, I don't know, maybe 13 million Jews, mm -hmm. thereabouts. How many people are there? Seven billion or something? Eight, eight, eight billion people? That's an infinitesimal percentage. Yeah. If you look at the land mass of Israel, it's a tiny dot on the map surrounded by its enemies. A tiny dot of land. When the world demands Israel return land, it has no land it can return. It's absurd. It's absurd. And the bigger question is why, not why does, why won't Israel give some of that land back? The, the bigger question is why won't the Arab nations take their own people back? They don't want them. That's the truth. They're more valuable to the Arab world as a pawn for the media. Hmm. I don't understand how they can be okay with sacrificing in the civilians in Israel that have done nothing, didn't know it was coming. They're still, I mean, they're just citizens of Israel. They live there, but that their people, I don't understand how someone can stand with a nation that is okay with doing that. I don't either, Eli. I don't understand that. It seems evil, but God is able to turn that which is done for evil to good. Amen. Jesus is coming. Amen. He's going to make it right. Amen. Please think about these things and pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Till next time. Shalom. And I mean peace. <laughs>